Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for your aura dab of the day. Today is Saturday. We're in the weekend. Today's topic is going to be a real important one, so listen carefully. I don't say that too often, but this one needs attention. Let's start with doctor. Well, in life, does it make a difference if you're nice to people? Do people treat you differently if you're nice to them? Does like return like? Remember that old saying, like returns like? If you love someone, do they love you back? I don't think that's the case. I mean, you can say, oh my God, I love you to someone, and they're going to go, I know. You know that one. If you're nice to someone, oh, let me help you with that. Are they going to help you back? Let me hold the door for you. And now let me hold the door for you. Is that what they do? Maybe. But you're probably thinking, why is Senior Stoner talking about that? How important could that be? It's incredibly important when they're your doctors or when they're the staff in your doctor's office or when they're the nurse that's attending to you or whether they're the administrator that's checking you in. You need to remember something really important. And I'm about to say something I didn't think was possible. The nicer you are to these people, the better your results are going to be. Now, Senior Stoner, you can say you're all screwed up. You don't know what you're talking about. It's medicine. It has nothing to do with emotion or, or feelings or being nice. Guess what? It does. It does. I'll say it again. It does. How many times on a quiet Saturday evening do you watch the news, maybe the cable news, and you're looking for a discussion or the news something, all of a sudden what they call as a human interest story comes up about the poor person, child, or animal that's in a tough situation that people are helping. Why do they talk about that? Because people help in those situations. God forbid there's a natural disaster and the animal shelter is inundated with floods. People run to rescue the animals. Why? Because animals are loving creatures, innocent creatures that people think don't do any harm to anyone and we must save these creatures. Why don't they do that all the time for people? People are supposed to be able to get out of their own way. People are supposed to be able to make decisions for themselves, keep themselves safe. But when you put yourself in the hands of anyone, anyone and anywhere in the medical professional world, I don't care if it's someone talking to you in a psychological, psychological world or if they're working on you in a surgical world, all the way from one aspect polarity to the non-invasive talking to the heavy invasion brain surgery okay what happens to these people when they encounter you do they register you're an asshole or you're a sweetheart does that make a difference when it comes time for your care i say yes i say no question absolutely and i'll tell you why I've been both sides of the coin, and I need to talk about it. For many years, I was on fentanyl. Fentanyl patches, you all know what they are. 75 milligram patches every three days, which basically invaded my life, my family's life, my business life, and everything about it. And I became nasty, short-tempered, quick response. In a doctor's office, I might have been like a TV announcer. Who knows how I sounded? Telling them what to do. You think they were willing to help me? You think they really wanted to find a solution to Senior Stoner's problem or get me the hell out of the office? Think about it. And eventually, they got me the hell out of the practice. That might have been because of me. That might have been because of the way I raged and was, and they couldn't manage it. Think about that, okay? Refusal to care for someone, possibly because of the way they were. Dealing with them, not the physical aspects, maybe the psychological and the verbal aspects. One polarity. Now let's go to the other polarity. I had a root canal yesterday. The second step of a root canal. And I arrive, and they explain to me I might lose my tooth. A lo lovely, dent lovely oral, uh, oral surgeon, but she explained to me that until she starts working, she will not know. 
And I said, you're kidding me. I didn't even know you had to do it anymore. I'm not in any more oral pain. Are you kidding me? Yes, we have to do it. We have to find out. And if I cannot fill all four roots, the tooth will have to be extracted. And you can save money by, you know, me not going all the blah, blah, blah. <gasps> but, 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 all right, we'll do what you have to do. Well, can you get it done while I'm here? You know, if it can get done, well, I don't think so, uh, Senior Stoner, uh, because... It takes so long, and we won't have time today. It's at 11.15. I'm at 11.15. And I'm before the gas is on, I'm thinking to myself, wait a second, 11.15, it's lunchtime. No wonder they don't want to go and do more. Well, I started to talk a little bit about my pain. She knows me a little bit. She says, I, I know you're in that. I'm sorry you're in that. I said, well, I don't know if I ever told you about my YouTube channel. She says, what, what do you mean? I said, yes, I have a YouTube channel with several thousand subscribers and a couple hundred thousand views, and I talk about pain, and I talk about pills, and I talk about weed and how it can help. And she smiles and goes, huh. And I go, but well, i got to tell you something. If this comes out positive, you're going to be a star. And she laughs, and I say, oh, not by name, but in concept. And I get anesthetized with the gas, which I did a video on, by the way, and I should have put it up. But it was a real raw video again. Uh, optimistic, but raw. And the point of all this is, my tooth presented the way it did. But she could have done three things. She could have stopped at 11.45, a half an hour later, which was my appointment time. And packed me back up again and said, I'll see you in three more weeks for another four or five Novocaine injections, another gas of, uh, you know, uh, anesthesia, and we're going to do it all over again. But instead, she kept on moving, and I'm going like this a couple of times in the chair, and she says, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Finally, she says, yes, it looked good. And then she said again, yes, it looks good. And she said, yes, it looks really good, very good. And by me interacting with her in what I believe was a positive fashion, what I believe happened here is, and I heard the nurse say to her, and you don't remember a lot on uh, nitrous, but I remember the nurse saying, you are a wonderful doctor. She was a Russian nurse or Polish nurse. And the, the, doc, the oral surgeon says, well, it's a very complicated tooth. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? It's a complicated tooth. She didn't have to freaking start it. She could have packed that baby right back up and started that rest of that complicated tooth three weeks from now so she could have her freaking lunch on time or leave for the weekend on time. Think about it. Now, you're all saying, oh, well, they're professionals. And she even said, this is my job. Bullshit. They are people too, okay? The same urges and guidelines apply to them that apply to us. And what we don't understand a lot of times because we're caught up in it, we can't see it, okay, is that doing that will help us. We go in... How are you today? Um, oh, God. Oh. And the last thing you want to do is talk to the staff in the place. The last thing you want to do is have a conversation socially with the doctor. You want to get out. Just tell me how bad it is and let me get out. But if you can muster any, any morsel of ingredient of life, and I know it's hard for us, and I'm there all, 98% of the time, unfortunately, I'm in that spot. 2% of the time, I'm able to talk to them in a nice way. If you're able to talk to them in a nice way, they are going to perceive you in a nice way. And when they're doing their technical work, which is focused and technical, instead of them thinking, what an asshole this guy is every time they take a breath, they're going to think, boy, what a tough job that man has with all his pain. He's a nice man and doesn't deserve this. Am I going to keep working or not? They make the same decisions that you and I make on the decision tree, and we have to help them help us. I, I, I want to shout it, but it would be much too loud. The concept is not a concept. It's reality. These people in the medical profession are doing a job. Let's go to something catastrophic. Let's go to a rescue squad. God forbid you're involved in an accident or something's happening at home. You know, I've never seen a rescue squad person ever run. I've never seen it. I watch PD all the time, live PD. 
Never seen anybody run. Only seen cops run when there were school shootings. Never seen anybody run, ever. Especially when there's a car accident. Especially when they're running into a, getting into a house with a heart attack. They grab their stuff out of the back of the thing, put it in their hands, and walk on in. It's pretty scary. You can't influence that. There's no, and you can't influence it if you're unconscious. But your spouse or your significant other can influence. Hi, how are you? Thank you for getting here so fast. Oh, I'm so grateful for you to be here. Instead of, where have you been? What took you so long getting out of the goddamn car? He's almost dead. Oh, thank God you got here. Oh, you're my, my heroes. You're my heroes. You're my heroes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And they're going to say, it's my job, it's my job, it's my job. But by you saying, it's my hero, you're my hero, you're my hero, it's getting through. You know, you've heard enough Perry Mason that when the, said, the judge says, jury, disregard the question, the jury already heard the freaking question. You can't disregard it. So once it's out of your mouth into their ears that you think they're heroes, well, guess what? Human nature takes over and they want to save this person more. I'm sorry. This is the truth. It's a harsh reality. It's a harsh reality first responders or people too. Okay? Of course, they're going to run and be a little faster if it's a child or something. But if it's a regular old person, they're going to take their time getting their stuff. And if you're screaming hullabaloo, they're going to push you aside and think this is another wild person. If you say, thank you, my God, you've come, my angels, my heroes, thank you so much. I can't wait for you to save my husband's life, my wife's life, my friend's life. Oh, They're going to say, well, we'll do our best. But you've been nice. The clerk who's setting you up for the appointment for the MRI who says, I'm sorry, they're all booked up. Be nice. The clerk that says, I'm sorry, I can't get you in for your dental emergency. We're all booked up. Oh, it's hurting so much. Doesn't matter. How you doing today? How are you? Great. Did you have a great New Year? Oh, that's wonderful. By the way, I'm in a lot of pain. Is there anything you think you can do? Oh, and by the way, I know it's coming up on Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day in advance. You got to try anything you can try. And if you don't try it, you are remiss. If you don't try to do these things, you are remiss. I have been remiss. I have been like this with all my bullshit that's been going on. And I have forgotten my most important skill I own. Salesmanship. It's what I've done for all my life. You turn negatives into positives. Forget reality. It's the perception. You turn that bag of coal into what they think is a bag of gold. It's the same bag of gold, but by the time you are finished talking to them, it's a bag of gold. Let's take a hit, and I have the aura out. I hope it's charged. Let's see. Okay, here we go. We're going to heat up the Aura. Haven't used the Aura in a while. And I'm going to try these new diamonds and see what happens. Here we go. Cheers. Going in now. The Aura is going to get covered up. Cheers. When the Aura gets started... I've told you this, it's very tasty. But the aura has a tendency on the pass around to get very hot. Cheers. <coughs> oh my. <coughs> if I was having a party at my house, this would be the one I would use. <coughs> By the way, this is my personal stock I bought just so I wouldn't run out. There's nobody doing anything for Senior Stoner. I buy everything myself. Cheers. And remember, it's very important. This is critically important. <coughs> Be as nice as you can to people in the medical world that are working with you. They're gatekeepers, the people at the front desk. There are people who recommend procedures who start interviewing you in the beginning and there's the person the doctor or the clinician that's going to deal with you eventually they are all critically important and i don't care if it's the person who's bringing you your ice water you must be nice to these people and they will do better for you this is the real senior stoner
Hoping everybody has a good Saturday. Keep the pain to a minimum, everybody. And remember to be nice to those medical professionals and their staffs. Cheers.